Hello, fifth graders. Happy Monday. I hope you are all doing well. Um, this is week five of distance learning. Um, so I wanted to go over a few things first, a couple of changes, um, not big changes. Don't worry. Um, just kind of small things. Um, I do also want to highlight that um, to do list on Google Classroom. Um, so I made a short video that I posted on um, Thursday last week um, on the Google Classroom page showing you how to access this to-do list on Google Classroom, which is actually quite helpful. Um, and it can kind of organize your thoughts a little bit and kind of organize your work, what's still missing, what do you still have to do for the week, um, those kinds of things as well. So um, check that out if you want to access that. Um, I did send it home in a parent email, so they do know about that as well. Um, but this week is all about um, adaptations at first. So this is already something we touched a little bit on. And then really the rest of the week is review. Um, we've done five weeks now of ecosystems. That's a long time. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we are getting the information that we need, that we kind of slow down. We take a little bit of a pause. Um, and then I want to make sure that we're still um, retaining that stuff all the way from, you know, five weeks ago. So um, your assignment, you just have one this week that is um, officially due that you do have to turn in, um, is a, a review worksheet. Kind of think of it like a study guide, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, let me shrink myself here into the bottom corner and we will go ahead and get started. So um, first I do want to start out with some reminders um, that you need to do attendance for each class every day. Now, the big difference here is that it has to be done by 6 p.m. that day. So in order for you to be counted here, present in your classes, in all of them, you have to go in and do your attendance form or however you check in with that teacher by 6 o'clock that evening. That's when we go in and we take attendance. And if you don't do these things, you're going to be marked absent. We don't want you getting phone calls home saying that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Those attendance forms are short. They are easy to access either through the checklist or through our distance learning pages. So please, please, please make sure to check in on Google uh, Classroom or through your attendance form that you have to fill out. Um, a reminder to please do your lessons first, meaning do your readings, do your videos, whatever form that your teachers are giving you the lessons in, do those first. It's going to be really hard to do your homework if you're not able to understand the lesson. So um, always watch this video first thing Monday morning that usually um, will let you know what's going on for the week, what your homework is, how to access your homework, how to do things like that. Um, it kind of gives you a heads up. So please make sure you do all those first in all your other classes as well. Then you can do the homework. Um, moving forward, the big idea is optional. Um, I know that there's kids, you guys are moving at a lot of different paces. Um, so if you're done with your schoolwork early, the big idea is there for you to work on, to um, turn in and Sunday each week um, and just kind of for fun and just a good way for you to stretch your mind, to learn something new, um, to continue to challenge yourself and to grow your brain. Um, so it is underneath the optional section for the checklist, but it is still strongly encouraged. So um, I would say that even if you're not all the way done with it by Sunday, just go ahead and turn it in um, and then start fresh with your new week's material starting that following Monday. Um, come to office hours when you can. We started to see a lot of new faces last week, which was so wonderful. It was just so nice. You know, we haven't seen you in gosh, seven weeks now. So that's a long time and we miss you. And even if it's just to say hello, even if you don't have questions, that's just fine. Um, just pop your head in. Um, all of your fifth grade teachers would be very excited to see you. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the to-do list on Google Classroom is a great function for you. So check out that YouTube video um, that I posted for that and it will show you how to access it um, and kind of organize your work. Now, Please make sure that you are asking questions. That private uh, message is a great way to do so because um, I get an email notification right away that, hey, so-and-so asked a question so I can go in and type my response. So please be looking for that. Um, one thing I did also want to mention is that if you do have your own mobile device, if you have your own cell phone or whatever it is, um, downloading the Google Classroom app is a really great way to um, stay on top of your work because what you can do is you can turn on your notifications. And so when you turn on your notifications for the Google Classroom app, it gets kind of updates of when things are missing. Um, it lets you know when we have given you a message, that kind of thing. So that is definitely worth checking out. Now this week we are talking about adaptations and this is something that we talked about during the school year, actually during our um, late start days, during our exploratory days. Now an adaptation is a special trait that an animal or a plant has so that it can survive better in its own environment. Um, so 
This can range from what they do to things that they have um, to how they behave, right? So here on the left, we have a flounder fish, which I think is one of my favorite fish. Um, and he's obviously very well camouflaged. But one of my favorite things, an adaptation that he has is that when they're born, like a normal fish, they have eyes on the sides of their heads. But then during his teenage years, one eye actually moves to the other side. So instead of swimming like this, they start to swim like this. So that way they can bury themselves underneath the sand um, and wait for something to swim by that they can sneak attack and eat. Um, obviously a long tongue and this um, creature here, at webbed feet for swimming in this cute little duck. Um, so it's just something that helps it survive in its own environment. And remember, what's good for one is not always good for all. So for instance, um, Earlier, we did um, a big idea project on an animal perspective. And if your animal was to go to a different climate, how would it do? Now, for those of you that pick something like a polar bear, if you put that polar bear in a desert, he probably wouldn't do so well. He has lots of adaptations that have him survive great in that freezing cold environment, but not so great in a hot, hot desert. So it's all about what's good for that animal in that space. Now, this happens through very, very slow changes over very, very long periods of time. So this happens not just within one lifespan, but it's over many generations. And what they do is they help animals better find a certain niche or a place where they can get kind of their role in the ecosystem. So for instance, um, there is a bird called a finch. And what happened is over the time, um, a Sign, great scientist Charles Darwin was studying um, the Galapagos Islands. And on these islands, he saw that the finches, they looked a little bit different from island to island. And the thing that differed was their beak type. And so he found that some beaks were better for insect eating, some were more like the woodpecker type, and one were kind of the seed eating ones. And they all came from the same type of finch, but over long periods of time, they started to find different areas that they were great at. Some were really good at insect eating. That was their niche. That was where they fit in that role in the ecosystem. Um, so kind of depending on what the island had provided for them, they were changed over long, long periods of time. Um, during our exploratory day, we also talked about inherited traits versus acquired traits. Now, remember, inherited means you kind of get it from your parents. It's in your genes. It's something that um, you're born with. But acquired means it's something that you learn over time. So my brown eyes, I inherited from my parents. But I acquired the skill of playing the French horn. That was something I had to learn how to do. Learning how to shoot a free throw. I was not born knowing how to shoot a free throw. But over time, you learn or you acquire that skill. Um, this is just digging a little bit more into that acquired versus inherited. So again, acquired is means you get it throughout your life, something that you earn. Maybe it's really big muscles. Maybe it's really long hair. Um, maybe it's learning how to speak a different language. But inherited means you get it from your parents or from your genes, right? So it's your eye color, your height. Maybe it's even an animal's the ability to migrate and to know where to fly to. Now, there are two um, kind of categories of adaptations that animals and plants can have. They can have behavioral adaptations or they can have structural adaptations. So behavioral adaptation is what they do. It's how they behave, what they act like. Um, so if I said your behaviors have been super great since we've been doing distance learning, it means what you're doing has been really well done, right? Um, so this is something like migrating south for the winter. A lot of animals in Minnesota, especially birds, migrate for the winter, right? Something that they do. Um, and the picture on the right, you can see that those are all a huge school of fish. Um, same thing with herding animals. That's a behavioral adaptation that helps animals survive because they have strength in numbers. It's harder for those predators to catch the prey when they're in one big school or one big herd. Um, and for instance, uh, I just got this one the other day because my dog was um, looking out the window and he got all excited because he saw a little bunny hopping and then the bunny saw him. So he just froze. And because my dog is not very good at seeing colors, he really relies on movement. So rabbits freeze when they're spotted because then they kind of blend into the background. And it's harder for their predators to see that movement. So again, those are all behaviors, things that they do. 
Structural adaptations mean what physically do they have on their body? What physical features does that animal or plant have? Maybe it's the type of teeth that they have. And again, this is something we talked about too with what you eat, right? If you have those sharp canine teeth, you're probably a predator. But if you have kind of the molar type, you're probably more of an herb herbivore. Uh, maybe it's your body coverings. Sometimes things have scales or fur or quills. Um, sometimes like bugs have exoskeletons, right? Those hard, crunchy shells help protect them. Uh, camouflage is a nice, another nice structural adaptation. Something an animal has to help it better survive in its environment. Now, a word we've used quite a bit today is niche, right? This is an organism specific role in that ecosystem. So in a particular space, every animal kind of does a job. They kind of eat a certain thing. They take up a certain space. They live in a certain area. For example, the rabbit found its niche in the garden ecosystem. Now here we see um, the ecological niches for wading birds. So these are all birds that occupy the same space, but and they're able to do so because they all eat different things, right? So flamingos are able to kind of live in this little bit deeper water and feed here, whereas dabbling ducks can't reach quite as far, um, all the way to the plovers that just hop along the beach and pick out the little organisms through there. You can see that their beak shapes are a little bit different, um, what they eat is a little bit different, and that's so that way they don't have to fight for those resources. If two animals ate the same thing, lived in the same space, they would run out of those necessary resources. So that's why each animal kind of has their own niche. Now, plants can have adaptations as well. They have physical structures that help them survive. And they often have um, flowers that produce seeds that help with reproduction. Um, they can attract bees to help with pollination or the spreading of the seed. Now, some of the structures that they have are roots. So these were what we could see growing out of our crop crate on the very bottom. Sometimes you'd see the long roots through the little, um, the little container. And this helps with water and nutrient uptake. It also helps anchor the plant, meaning keeps it in one spot. It's not going to blow away in the wind. So these roots um, can help ground the plant and collect nutrients and food and water. The stem kind of acts like the support, kind of like the backbone of the plant, um, where it's able to keep it upright. Um, it's able to transport water and nutrients. Um, this is kind of like a tree trunk, right? We talked about the xylem and the phloem in, uh, at our Baker Park field trip. Right? So they're able to transport the nutrients up and down the stem or up and down the tree trunk if that's um, if we're talking about trees. And the leaves have a different job. The leaves help make food through that photosynthesis process. Right, They take in CO2 and carbon dioxide and then they are able to produce oxygen and make sugar for themselves through that photosynthesis. So again, if you're um, struggling with the whole photosynthesis thing, um, I do have um, some videos linked. So if you go back to the distance learning page, um, you can go back to that week and actually see those um, videos there. So those are super helpful. Now, we are used to hearing about animal adaptations more than plant adaptations. So some behavioral ones are hibernation, especially in Minnesota here. Some animals have hibernate in order to um, stay alive throughout the tough, tough winters. Um, so a lot of times they have defense mechanisms. Um, on the top here, we see a possum and possums are known for playing dead. So when they feel threatened, they'll actually just freeze and stop and pretend that they are dead. And sometimes they even like release a stinky odor to make themselves even more believable that they're dead. Um, and that's their defense system. Um, Cause a lot of things don't like to eat already dead animals. Um, and another one we talked about already is migration. And some structural runs, ones, meaning what they have are their types of body coverings. Do they have gills or lungs? Um, mimicry, meaning do they look like another um, organism? And then camouflage, here we see the nice snowy owl here on the snow covered ground. Now let's talk about your work for this week. Um, you do have a review worksheet that is due for this week and then you're gonna have an online activity that I expect you to do as well, but you're not gonna have anything physical to turn in for that. It's just gonna be something you're gonna do online and then tell me that you've done it by hitting that turn in button. Um, so you're going to go into Google Classroom and then you're going to open up the Classwork tab and select the Ecosystems Review Worksheet. Now, again, you're going to have your copy underneath your work. So in the top right corner, it's going to say your work and it's going to have your name and then the worksheet. You're going to type your answers in the spaces that are provided and turn it in when you're done. 
Now, this is something I don't expect you to have memorized. This is something I expect you to need to go back into your um, notes and into old videos and into old readings and kind of find those answers there. So it's almost like a little bit of a scavenger hunt. You're going to have to look for some of those answers. Um, so the worksheet does look a little bit like this. So again, for your directions, it says to use your resources to answer the following questions about ecosystems. You can use readings, videos, Quizlet is another good one because it has a lot of vocabulary on there or any other notes that you have um, to respond to each of the questions. Read carefully and type in your responses. Um, I suggest using a different color to type your responses, not yellow or white, obviously, because I have old people eyes and can't read it. Um, but when you find the definition of an ecosystem, you can change the color just by clicking here. Click something nice like this blue is nice and easy to read. And you would say an ecosystem is, and then you would type your response there. Now, again, you have your own copy underneath the Google Classroom page. Um, something else that is a, going to be a little bit different this week for us is that we are going to, um, in the Science Google Classroom, I am going to also put this video as an assignment. Obviously, I don't need you to do anything for this video or to turn in it or to um, turn in any work with it. But after you're done watching it, meaning like in a minute, just click the turn button. That way it's, it tells me that you're done. You've watched it. You're good to go. Um, I'm going to have the two videos, Monday video and Wednesday video as assignments on Google Classroom. So again, once you do the activity, once you watch it, once you read, do your readings, just click turn it. That way it tells me that you're actually doing these things um, and not just ignoring them. So it also will help you kind of keep track of what you need to do on that to-do list on Google Classroom. So again, watch that video if you're not sure how to, you're like, what? A to-do list? Um, watch, the Google, uh, watch the YouTube video I just posted and you should be able to access your to-do list there. So again, do the Monday video, do the Wednesday video, do your readings for this week, and then do your review worksheet. I do have that one more online activity. Again, it'll be posted on Google Classroom as an assignment. Once you do it, just click turn it. No work that you need to attach or anything like that, um, but just that review worksheet is your physical work for the week, kind of like your homework. It's almost like a study guide even. So thank you. Please continue to ask questions. Please continue to come to office hours, even if it's just to say hello. We miss you and we want to see you soon. All right, bye.